As Arsene Wenger's tenure ended in 2018, Arsenal found themselves 37 points behind the Premier League champions. But fast forward five years, and the Gunners were back in the title race, closing the gap to just five points. But what has been the hidden cost of this revival? Can I answer now? Yeah. <laughs> In this video, we'll explore the financial steps taken to rebuild Arsenal, comparing the last five years of the Wenger era with the following five. We'll examine how Arsenal went from raking in nearly 300 million to spending over 100 just five years later, a massive 400 million swing over the decade. We've meticulously analysed Arsenal's financial records over the past decade to unveil the story behind the numbers, focusing on three key metrics, revenue, profit, cash flow. But first, how have Arsenal's revenues developed over the decade? Arsenal's top line first peaked at the end of the Wenger era, but having dipped from Covid and on-field decline, the Gunners' revenue has surged, reaching 467 million in 2023, their best result of the decade. However, this still ranked only sixth highest in the Premier League, and over 18 million behind North London rivals Tottenham. So what drove this trajectory? To answer, let's dive into the revenue streams. Matchday revenue surpassed 100 million for the first time in six years, buoyed by the return of European football, as well as a 4% increase in ticket prices. Next, broadcasting revenues have also rebounded, delivering over 190 million, the best since their last Champions League run back in 2017, thanks to European football and a second place finish. And finally, commercial revenues have also soared to 169 million, fueled by the Gunners' new commercial strategy. Comparing the two eras, the last five seasons under Wenger averaged 365 million a year, whilst the subsequent five years, 381, a 4% increase and more money for Arsenal to play with. But how have Arsenal invested this extra income? To find out, let's dive into profits. Arsenal saw the bottom line rise until 2018, followed by five consecutive years of losses, with 2023 showing a 44.5 million deficit. This put Arsenal in the bottom half of the division financially, though still outperforming Tottenham. But the contrast is stark. Wenger's last five years averaged over 40 million in operating profit, while the post-2019 era has averaged a 46 million pound loss. Just what has caused this drastic change in profit profile? If you, I invite you one night, you will see that I like to spend money. <laughs> Let's address this with our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey out the revenue, and dive into staff costs. Arsenal's wage bill rose during the final Wenger years, but impressively, other than 2021, the new era has so far avoided further wage inflation. 2023 saw a wage bill of 235 million, less than five years prior. As a proportion of revenues, the Gunners have contained this to under 60% in all years outside the pandemic. But how has this translated onto points on the pitch? Arsenal's pair of second place finishes cost under 3 million a point in wages, but the rebuild phase saw that price soar to over 4 million apiece. But after staff costs alone, Covid alone separates the two phases. Next, operating expenses. These have swung throughout the decade, first peaking in 2018, then falling through COVID and the absence of European football. 2023, though, saw a new high at 113 million, in part due to European travel and cost inflation. And at EBITDA level, Arsenal's rebuild post Wenger starts to take shape. Third, stadium and facilities. Costs have grown steadily for maintaining the Emirates and the club's other sites. And finally, we come on to transfer fees. This is where the eras diverge dramatically. The Wenger era ended with a £28 million profit from player sales, whilst post Wenger saw fees surge to £146 million by 2023 and included a write off of £18 million in sunk transfer costs. This is the key investment area since 2018, both in volume and price. Up until 2018, the playing squad grew by just 10 to 77. Fast forward a further five years and this had soared to 115, four times the rate of growth as the needs of the squad grew to be competitive across 38 league games. That transfer activity is the difference maker between the two spells, going from five years in the black to five in the red. But does this new approach cause issues for financial fair play? 
assuming loans made by the owners meet league conditions. Over three years, Arsenal are allowed to lose a maximum of 105 million. Starting with operating profit, we add in the club's finance costs to get losses before tax. The club are then allowed to exclude certain costs such as youth and community development, as well as make adjustments for COVID loss of income. These aren't disclosed, so we are in the realm of estimates. We're assuming 35 million of allowable cost per year and a further 60 million of COVID impact in year one. Add those back in and that reveals Arsenal's PSR losses. A total of 60 million, well within the threshold. But with further big ticket buys in Declan Rice, Kai Havertz and Ricardo Calafiori, PSR thresholds will continue to be on the Gunners' forefront. So now we've broken things down, just how do we get to that £400 million swing in cash? As always, we're looking at the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. First, cash from operations, driven by those EBITDA line items. Arsenal has been an operational cash cow, bringing in money to the Emirates every single season. But there's a clear rebuild post-2018. Cash in dropped from 525 million in the first five years to just 330. Almost 200 million less, a combination of COVID and inconsistent European football. Next, back to transfer fees. This mirrors the PL story with increasing investment in recent years. The final five Wenger years saw net spend of 243 million. The following five, this had almost doubled to 456. This burnt another 200 million plus hole in the bank accounts. Add those two together and there's Arsenal's massive cash swing, going from 282 million of cash coming in to 126 million going out. Over 400 million of difference. So what has that done to Arsenal's debt picture? Arsenal's cash in meant the Alisson Wenger era in fact ended with a cash surplus. But the need for investment has seen that drop to over 200 million of net debt by the end of 2023. But on the pitch, Arsenal continue to tighten the gap at the top, and as we alluded to before, they've outperformed local rivals Tottenham in the league and at the bottom line. So if you want to see how much Spurs are valued, be sure to check out this video here. And with that, we're out.